السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So that helped, mashallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa sallallahu wa sallama ala ibadihi al-lazhin as-tafa. We praise Allah upon all conditions. He is the creator. He created entire creation. He created you and I. He created those before us. He created those we like. He created those we don't like. He created the Muslims, he created the non-Muslims, he created humankind, he created animals, he created all the other creatures. Why? He is the creator. He created it because he wanted to create entire creation. And he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I haven't created mankind and jinn kind except for them to worship me, which means I'm going to test them. I want them to do something. If they do it the way I tell them to do it, they will be successful. If they don't do it the way I want it, they have failed. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to the maker, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer, the one in whose hands lies your happiness and mine. The one in whose hands the, lies the solution to your problems and mine. The one in whose hands lies your paradise and mine, your forgiveness and mine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be praised. Amen. Praise be to Allah upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We prove that we are not jealous of those whom Allah has raised above us. Rather, we thank Allah for those gifts. Because it is Allah who chooses who to elevate and who to drop. When He chose the best of creation as Muhammad, peace be upon Him, we consider it an honor. We follow Him. When He chooses some above others, we consider it His power. We ask Allah to bless every one of us. With the blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we don't forget to send blessings and salutations upon those who came before from the time of Adam because they were all humankind. And the messengers who came with their own companions, some had few, some had more. May Allah bless even the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every one of us and our offspring. Those to come up to the end. Say Ameen. Amen. May Allah bless them. You might be thinking, I don't have offspring. Well, if you make a dua for blessed offspring, Allah will grant you a blessed spouse. So when we say, may Allah give you a blessed offspring, may Allah bless our offspring. Say Ameen. Amen. In order for Allah to start the ball rolling by giving us the best of spouses. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, while we're talking about raising this ummah and the children of this beautiful ummah, we must start by thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator, the one whom we are going to go back to definitely. You're going to go back to Allah. I'm going to go back to Allah. He made me. I did not choose my parents. I did not choose the location of my birth. I did not choose my race. I did not choose the amount of wealth that I would be born into or the conditions. Moments ago we saw these children. It is our duty to reach out to them even if it means by a dua or by a few nairas or dollars or pounds because Allah could have placed me in exactly that place. But I thank Allah, showing gratitude to Allah that He has made me much better than so many. I will reach out to those whom Allah has perhaps not chosen what He chose for me. But trust me, He's chosen certain things better for them than I. Allah gives everyone gifts, but they need to recognize those gifts. When we talk of raising the ummah and raising our children, we need to understand, like I said, the first thing is, who is Allah? He's your maker, He made me. And like I said, I didn't choose my color, so I must respect all colors. I didn't choose my nationality. Life has become such that we have arrived at a point where 
your nationality is connected to certain factors. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for you where you will be born, hence all the circumstances surrounding your life. So you have a certain nationality. If it is connected to your birth, you have nothing to do with it. And if it is connected to your movements, perhaps you may have had a small role that Allah allowed you. But I want to tell you, my brothers, my sisters, if you understand who is Allah, you will understand that you and I are here temporarily. Life will definitely be a struggle. Life is going to be such a struggle because Allah wants us to appreciate paradise. If life was not a struggle and we had everything that we wanted or needed in life, then paradise would lose its value. You need to realize that Allah has created difficulties in order for us to prove our connection with Him. So there will be hardship. There will be loss of life. There will be calamity. And Allah tells us, I'm going to test every one of you. With what? With a little bit of fear and some hunger. And loss, material loss. Allah says, I'm going to test you. I'm going to test you. Loss of life, loss of produce. So much of loss in various aspects of your life. Allah says, He's going to test every one of us. May Allah make it easy for us. So those of us who think that life is going to be a little paradise are mistaken. The wealthiest of us also has issues and problems and difficulties and hardship. When Allah gives you, get close to Allah. When Allah takes away from you, get close to Allah. You are just a human. When you falter, turn back to Allah. So when you know that Allah is the creator, he made me without me being chosen to be made, you will understand that Allah Almighty will choose offspring for us. Primarily, he chooses for us our spouses, although he has given us a role to play in that. You want to marry someone, subhanAllah, be like a person whom that person will want to marry as well. You have a person who wants to marry a good guy, a pious guy, or a man who wants to marry a good woman, a lovely pious woman who is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're not interested in leading their lives in a way that that person would want someone like them. That's a point of starting. When I want to marry, I need to be the person that someone of that nature would want to marry in the first place. So let's mend our connection with Allah. Nothing will happen without a connection with Allah. And Allah knows we are human because He made us. You connect yourself with Allah, you've done a favor to everyone who's going to interact with you right up to the end. When you disconnect from Allah, you've actually paid a disservice to yourself to begin with. You disconnected, you unplugged. This is why Salah is five times a day. Connection with Allah is every day. The reason is you need that connection in order to be able to protect yourself, connect yourself to your maker and connect those who are going to be connected to you with the maker as well. You might be thinking, we're talking of raising the Ummah. Where are you going? Where did you start? Well, I want to start in a different way. My brothers and sisters, I'm very, very proud of Lagos today. May Allah bless you. In your thousands, sitting for hours, listening to Qala Allahu wa Qala Rasulu is not a joke. May Allah bless you. I don't know what it must have costed to put up this facility for today and whatever is here, but I feel like giving double the amount of whatever the ticket was to one ummah so that the next time they have it, they can actually have it free for us. So if you would really like to appreciate what you have been blessed with today, you need to
dig into your pocket over and above thanking Allah. Because this, I can tell you, is not free. One ummah, I am proud of this achievement. May Allah bless you and grant you strength. Wallahi, it's amazing. From where I'm standing, if you could see what I can see, subhanallah, subhanallah, you would know that people fear Allah, they love Allah, they want to be closer to Allah, even though they are living in the challenges of the world that are so tempting that we actually falter sometimes. But we want Allah, we love Allah, and we want Allah to love us, don't we? May Allah love all of us. So my brothers and sisters, the biggest favor you can do your unborn children is to choose for them a mother or a father who's going to be the best. Did you hear that? The biggest favor you can do for your unborn children is to choose a mother or a father for them who will be the best. So remember, moments ago we heard Sheikh Abdul Hamid and the others speak about how we will be recruiting for a job, subhanAllah. The job as a spouse, but I'm also a spouse, subhanAllah. So that favor that you're doing your children would start off by you improving yourself as you're young and as you are growing older. Sister Maryam told us moments ago that 70% of those attending today, according to some who just did a quick survey, are unmarried, subhanAllah. May Allah best bless you with the best of offspring. Amen. You know that dua, right? Amen. You know the dua. What that means is, it's an inclusive dua. It includes in it your spouse and whatever else and the happiness that comes with it and then the offspring that would be given the best of upbringings by the best of parents. Amin. But I must be the best parent myself. <laughs> Allah is not going to change the condition of a nation until and unless every individual changes himself or herself. I must start with myself. People say the problems we are facing as an ummah, that wants to blame, that wants to blame, that wants to blame. Yes, people might look and lay blame, but the solution of it lies with you and I. If every one of us can change ourselves, trust me, we've changed the whole ummah. May Allah grant us that change. So my brothers and sisters, as we grow older, and like I said, I'm addressing people who are mostly not married, improve yourself, develop your taqwa, develop your consciousness of Allah. Why? He made you. That's why. He created you. That's why. Indeed, for him, was the creation he made, he created in the first place. So he has the right to instruct, to issue an instruction. Why do you think Allah has the right to tell you and I what's halal and haram? Why do you think Allah has the right to tell you and I to fulfill our salah five times a day? Because he made you, that's why. He made you, so he has the right. Had he not made us, he wouldn't have any right to tell us, worship me alone, subhanAllah. So when you worship Allah alone, you've developed yourself. You begin to see the light. You know what Allah says? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana Oh you who believe, if you are going to develop your relationship with Allah, He is going to give you the ability to distinguish. Criterion, the ability to tell between right and wrong, between that which is correct, incorrect, the darkness and the light, all of that, you are given a gift from Allah to be able to tell what to do and what not to do. My brothers and sisters, many of us are drowning in materialism where our makeup means more than our own salah. Subhanallah. And it's not fair for me to just give an example of makeup because the brothers are also deep into their designer names and so many other materialistic things, the cars, the wealth, the earning, etc. All of that, there is a limit to its permissibility and that is if it comes in the way between you and Allah. 
then that's where you stop because Allah gets preference always. So don't let yourself drown in materialism. It's not about your accessories. It's not about the latest phone. Although we appreciate those things because we are just human. MashaAllah. We are human. I can speak for myself. If I see, for example, I have a phone called the Samsung 9 Plus. I have it. I'm sure when the 12 Plus comes out, I'll give the 10 a break, perhaps the 11 a break. When the 12 comes out, I'm going to be keen to look at it and think, ah, I need to update my phone. It's human nature. But I'm not going to steal anyone's money in order to do that. Nor am I going to do something clandestine in order to be able to achieve something I want. No, I must still remember I belong to Allah. My duty unto Allah is such that I will whatever I will fulfill whatever I should for the sake of Allah. Relying upon Allah to ensure, meaning Allah will ensure. Once you rely on Allah, Allah will ensure that you're taken care of. You know, I, I like to give this example. Everything that walks on earth, Allah promises that it is up to us to cater and provide for those things that move. Everything that moves, we will provide for it. We guarantee. When Allah can take care of an ant that I cannot see, do you really think Allah is not going to take care of me, you and I? Moments ago, I was speaking to a group of sisters. I asked them, who from amongst you is married? All of them said, we're not married. Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy. But I promise you, I'm going to say a statement that some of you might disagree with, but I have to get it off my chest. If Allah has kept you single for a reason, while you keep trying and trying, He knows that there is something in this that is best for you. I always tell those who are struggling to get married and they are trying and they cry. Number one, may Allah make it easy for you. May Allah grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. But number two, I swear being a counselor myself, being married to an idiot, one who is going to trouble you, harass you, create issues for you that would probably result in suicidal thoughts, is not as good as being single. Subhanallah. I'd rather be single than married to an idiot. And I heard some sisters say, I'd rather have a quarter of a good guy than the whole of an idiot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. I'm not here to promote or demote anything that Allah has permitted. Because that is there. If it's permissible, it's permissible. If something is allowed, it's allowed. But I am here to tell you, if Allah has kept you in a certain condition, you need to understand there has to be wisdom behind it. Even though I may not know it right now. Allah knows it. One day He will tell me. But I trust Allah enough to know that He's kept me single. However, once again I make this dua. May Allah bless us all with spouses who will be the coolness of our eyes. And over and above that, with children who will be the coolness of our eyes because it brings me to the next point. We're talking of children but we have to spend a moment to pray for those who are married, but they have a new problem. What's it? They don't have kids. That is your Jannah. Your sabr is your Jannah. Your patience is your Jannah. There are so many from amongst us whom Allah has blessed with a beautiful, loving spouse, but unfortunately no children. Do you accept that as what Allah has chosen for you? Accepting what Allah has chosen for you does not mean that you shouldn't try whatever you have to or can medically and other halal ways to get the children, to conceive for example. It's permissible. You should try. There's no harm. Beyond a certain point you might find it's a small medical matter. It may be. So your trial is also an ibadah. It's an act of worship. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ has told us that it is part of the plan of Allah to want us to reproduce. 
So we have to spend a moment dedicating or dedicated to those who don't have offspring. May Allah bless you with offspring. May Allah grant you sabr. I've become very sensitive to ask married couples, do you have kids? Sometimes that question, if they've been trying for 10, 15, 20 years, it becomes a point of sadness within the heart. So I become a little bit sensitive. I try to ask them these questions. Unless I'm very close to you, then I would know. Some of us have been blessed with offspring, both boys and girls. So someone says, how many children do you have? And you might just say, so many boys, so many girls. Can I tell you how many I have? You want to know? Yeah. MashaAllah, seven girls. <laughs> MashaAllah, and two boys. We thank Allah for that. We thank Allah for that. I know one of my colleagues, he had a daughter and then another daughter and a third daughter and a fourth daughter and a fifth daughter and a sixth daughter and a seventh daughter and an eighth daughter and a ninth daughter and a tenth daughter and an eleventh daughter and a twelfth daughter and a thirteenth daughter and they were just daughters. MashaAllah. His name is Sheikh Asim Al Hakim. Grant him goodness. You might have heard that name, right? But Allah blessed him. He's blessed. And so are we. When you have males alone, you are blessed. When you have females alone, you are blessed. When you have male and female, you are blessed. And when you have neither male nor female, you are blessed in ways that perhaps you have not yet understood. Allah might have chosen you for something far greater. Go out and search. What's the purpose? What is it? Don't be angry and upset with Allah. So the reason why I'm actually spending a lot of time on this is because and I told the organizers, by the way, that since there's no Q&A, and since it's the last talk, and since the people have come from the morning right up to now, please let me talk. Don't give me a time limit. <laughs> so I promise you, my brothers and sisters, people complain when they have boys only. People complain when they have girls only. People complain when they don't have kids. And when they, when they have both boys and girls, guess what they're doing? They're complaining, ah, these kids of mine. <laughs> so who is thanking Allah? Who is thanking Allah? Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Remember when I started, I spent a moment to explain the praise of Allah and that everything is from Allah and we praise Him upon all conditions. This is what it is. الَّذِينَ يَحْمَدُونَ اللَّهَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ On the day of judgment, a caller will call. Where are those who used to praise Allah? Whether it was happiness or sadness, they still praised Allah. They will be given a VIP treatment. Because they praised Allah. In sickness, they praised Allah. We all have to get sick. Have you thought about something? A flu. You know the normal flu that we have. It is sometimes seasonal. It comes back every year. Why? Some of us are healthier, maybe every two years, maybe a little bit more or less. A guy like me with a weak immune system, I thank Allah. It happens much more often, but Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. Why does Allah make us go through that every... To, to realize how powerful He is and how weak we are. No matter who you are, small droplet infection can actually make you bedridden for two weeks. And you are a powerful person, subhanAllah, to show you, man, you are actually very, very insignificant compared to Allah. Just thank Allah. Thank Allah. Let that be an opportunity of gaining closeness to Allah. Now let's get to those whom Allah blesses with children. Number one, I firmly believe that as you get married and you've chosen a good spouse and mashallah you've made the right decisions and you've looked at the guidance from Allah and now you're married it doesn't mean you need to have children ASAP as soon as possible we're going to have offspring if you've chosen that in an enlightened fashion Alhamdulillah and if it has happened from Allah Alhamdulillah but if you could I'd rather you actually gave it a little bit of a break to get to know one another a little bit better. This advice would not have been given to you a few decades back, but now it is because we are facing thousands, if not millions of children of divorced couples, broken homes who are struggling, who've lost the path completely. And it was quite simple to wait 
When I look at them, they were normally and usually born within the first year of marriage, sometimes the next day. Why didn't you just wait a while? I need to make sure that I really believe this person is deserving to be the father of my kids or the mother of my kids. It's not haram from an Islamic perspective. No, not at all. Especially when you see the result of the mistakes people are making. They have one kid, two, three, four, and after that everything is gone. What happened? You kept her pregnant. Why? For whatever reason. It's not prohibited. But why did you bring in kids when you knew there was something wrong with your relationship? Or you were not yet 100% certain of it. It's not wrong. You cannot speak about raising an ummah without advising couples to say, be careful, hold on, relax. Don't just be so quick. I remember recently I attended the wedding. At that wedding, I met the, the groom, I gave him a hug, and I told him, may Allah bless you with offspring. He told me, not just yet. <laughs> I told him, why? We're learning, right? He said, I want to travel the world. I want to enjoy life. Just me and her. And perhaps after five, ten years, we'll have kids. I told him, and how do you know that you're going to have a life that will span beyond or up to that five or ten years. How do you know? What, why did I ask him the question, how do you know? Because, because I wanted him to correct that slightly to say that inshallah I'd like to wait until I'm 100% certain rather than making it a dunya and a worldly reason to say I want to see the world. You can see the world with your kids, that's just an excuse. Because daddy don't want to have mommy anymore. So he says, well, once we have kids, I'm sorry, you, we can't travel. Because you know, now it's a stress. 